not a problem. So, the AMG GTR Pro, 4 litre twin turbo V8, 585 horsepower, 0 to 60 in just over 3 seconds, and limited to 198 miles an hour. And you know the best thing about all of that? This car is quite happy doing exactly the opposite. I'm pottering through a little village, I'm doing 25 miles an hour. And the car's quite happy. It's got great visibility, it's nice and comfy, it makes a good noise, especially with the windows down here, the rumbling a little bit. Also, it means that other people can appreciate the car because everyone loves this car. It's not, in my opinion, pretentious like a bright red Ferrari or bright green Lamborghini. Sorry to my friends that own those cars. Uh, it kind of doesn't really look like anything else. My missus summed it up perfectly when she saw this car the first time. She said it looks like a Hot Wheels car. And I think she's hit the nail on the head. It looks a little bit silly. It's a muscle car, it's got a great big long bonnet. The color really pops, it's solar beam yellow. So if you were gonna try and describe this color to somebody over the phone, it'd sound horrible, because I'd say it was like a yellow, kind of mustard, gold sort of color. But actually, when you see it in real life, it looks absolutely mega. And the amount of people that have come up and started a conversation about it, I pulled up next to a bus stop to let some cars through the other day, and literally the lady next to the bus stops went, that is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and then the guy next to her went, absolutely madam, I couldn't agree more. And the two of them started a conversation about the car literally while I'm sat next to them in the car. It was incredible. I've had a wow, I've had a, is that my Uber? <laughs> Which was a bit random. Um, I've also had somebody walk past my house, literally do a double take away from his phone and then take his glasses off in a bit of a, oh wow. It's so easy to get about in, literally press the button, into drive, away you go. I absolutely love it. But then you get to a national speed limit, pop it into race, make it a bit more spiky, drop a gear, Support would be nice, but there we go. 
um, there is no adjustment in the seat at all. It goes, well there is, there's two adjustments, forwards and the backwards. It doesn't go up and down, it doesn't tilt, adjust, uh, any of that, but I'll be honest, they're pretty much spot on. Driving position is really good though, you feel like you sit low enough down, but I can still see like, down the bonnet, of which it, there is a lot of it. Uh, it's great visibility in the mirrors, quite a bit of headroom, easily wear a crash helmet in here, which is really good because I'm taking it on track in a couple of weeks and I'm super looking forward to that. comes out quite a long way which I almost always love. I like to get in my elbows at like a 90 degrees, really feel like a kind of Le Mans driver, get the steering wheel right out. Paddles move with the steering wheel as well, which some cars don't, but I always think that they should. Also, it's just a lovely place to be in here. It's really wide when you sit in it. You almost feel like there could be a third seat in the middle. Obviously you can't because of the transmission, but it is quite wide. Um, and just, quite a spacious cabin. It feels a little bit dark in here, like it's almost had like a roof chop kind of thing, um, which I think just makes it look super aggressive from the outside. But it's not, it doesn't feel claustrophobic in here at all. Quite a bit of space in here. Gigantic boot, loads of room in there. Yeah, I love it. I love the way the center console kind of comes down and then splays out and joins the dash. And then you sit quite low and then the, and then the, these door seals are quite high, almost in, in like kind of fight, you're in like a fighter bomber which is also, I think, conveyed on the outside as well, because the front looks so wide, it looks really aggressive. When you pull up and start your parking next to other cars, you realize how wide it is. I'll be honest, when you're out on the dual carriageway motorway, if you've got middle lane hoggers, fast lane hoggers, you don't need to tailgate them in this or flash your lights. As you're approaching them, they get a glance of you in their rear view mirror and they jump out the way. <laughs> because it just looks so menacing. And I've experienced what this looks like in the rear view mirror on a Petra Tours. It looks really menacing. My preferred mode is Sports Plus. The valves are open and it does something weird with the mapping as well. Even if you've got the valves open in Comfort and Sports, you don't get the pops and the cracks. But in Sports Plus and Race, you do get the pops and the cracks. Um, but in Race mode, it just feels a little bit too uh, race car it's a bit too stiff on the road um, if you're on a petrol air tours going at a fair good pace then you want it in race mode i couldn't believe the difference even between sports plus and race mode um, on petrol air tours but it's just great and stuff in it. Uh, I know the owner is thinking about changing I think the downpipes and getting it remapped so I don't know if that will make it a bit noisier. He doesn't want to make it too noisy because he still wants to take it on track. Um, I drove a few months ago, I drove a E63 AMG on a SCC private members tour and I think that's pre-OPF and that was just kind of shouty all the time when you got on the accelerator even at low revs you could really hear it warbling. setting but I think because this is a GTR Pro is actually like adjustable um, springs and dampers so you could probably slacken that off but I've only had it a few days so I'm not going to investigate that I'm certainly not going to muck around with the settings because it's not my car and it is set up for, for track and petrol at all so you probably could make it a bit more comfortable but I don't mind it like this. Fuel consumption is not amazing, but then what do you expect? 600 horsepower V8 twin turbo. It's only 1600 kilos, which when I first saw it, it looks like two ton all day long, but it isn't. And actually now I've started driving it around, I'm averaging kind of 16, 18 to the gallon, potting around and having a bit too much fun with it. And then on a run, if you're pretty careful, you get it up to like 28, 30 which is no different from the M3 I had last year. So probably a little niggle is the visibility out the back. It's got this half cage in, which 
looks really cool and you do need to have the um, harness bar along the bottom for the harnesses I don't really know what the top of the cage is for also because it's like bolted to the top of the struts I feel like it transfers a bit of um, road noise into the car which the cages do it looks really cool it's painted the same color as the car but between that and the spoiler I can't see loads out the back I can see out the back it's not like a 992 GC3 wing where, where it literally cuts across your rear vision but ideally I'd love it just to have the harness bar and then none of the rest of the cage but carbon ceramic brakes shunting around it can be a little bit di diffy if that's the word you know, it feels like it's got a wheel to diff but scrubs the tires a tiny little bit it's only if you've got like coming out somewhere that's a little bit undulationy and just kind of you can feel it locking up a little bit but yeah i tend to leave it in drive most of the time and then grab the paddles when i need to which is great but i also like to have it in sports plus all the time so i get the pops and the cracks but then because it's in sports plus it then wants to be in a slightly like lower gear than it needs to be all the time so i would like to have it i'm sure if you go in there and play around with the settings like on a m3 for example you can set how ferocious you want the gearbox to be just on the lever so if you could do that in this and have it in like a comfort gear selection mode but still have the engine in like a sports plus map that for me would be the sweet spot but at the moment i'll just kind of leave it in sports plus and then just make it do an upshift on the paddles when i think feel like it's getting a bit ready for action and I don't want it to be. <laughs> yeah, you love it. <laughs> Honestly, it smiles. Everyone smiles at it. People love it. Especially when the sun's out, which is rare this weekend. So I've just popped up to me mum and dad's house, just going to see my mum for a cup of tea, tried to convince her to come out on it, but she was having none of it. But I thought while I'm here, just go over a couple of little niggles. Overall the car is near perfection as far as I'm concerned. There's a couple of little niggles. One, it's got a gigantic boot, but around the back there's no button to get in the boot, unless it's hidden. So you've got to use the key or there's a little uh, button down by the driver's seat. And then once you're in, it's actually gigantic. So you can fit uh, five bags of potatoes in here. Don't ask me why I know. But it's really cool. And like I said already, this uh, bit of roll cage is a little bit in the way. But other than that, it's not too bad. These seats are super comfy. Like I said before, they only go forwards and backwards, don't go up and down, no uh, tilt adjustment because they're fixed. They do hold you in and they are super comfortable. In my opinion, the same as all racy seats, they could do have a little bit more lumbar support there. There is a little bit of a bump there and they're not. that's not too bad. But in my opinion, it'd be nice to have a little bit more. This uh, seat belt here, maybe it's because I'm a slightly fuller sized gentleman, but when you drop in, you do kind of land on that seat belt a little bit. Also, when you go to put the seat belt in, because it's kind of tilted towards you, not away from you like a seat belt normally would do, when you put the seat belt in, normally you kind of it'd go over and you'd go in like that. You've got to kind of tilt it a bit more towards the uh, transmission tunnel to pop it in, but that's not the end of the world. I do like the layout of the dash. I'm not normally a, a big fan of like the TV screen dash, but because it's got the proper dials on it, it's pretty good. I wish the fuel gauge was a bit more prominent. Because it is quite thirsty and it hasn't got the biggest tank, it does run down. So I'd, I'd almost like a dial because it's quite a thin line at the bottom of the gauge and when you, at the bottom of the cluster. And when you're having too much fun, you don't really notice it that much. But I tend to have the range left uh, in the tank or on the screen all the time and keep glancing at it. Center console is pretty cool. It's got a, a traction variable traction control thing, which sounds bit of a horrible sort of clicky noise however nine times out of ten you probably won't touch that anyway I do like these buttons they're all little TV screens which is really cool a little hack when you press the start button and it starts to fire up it takes a second or two for these buttons to light up however 
they are active as soon as you start the car up. So what I tend to do is press the start button and immediately press the exhaust button. Even though it's blank, it still works. And then when it fires up, the valves are already open. I'm also not sure what this blank one is for. That isn't a button. These like click, that doesn't do anything. I don't know what else you can spec on this car because it seems to have everything. So I don't know if that's for like rocket boosters, missiles, something like that. Um, don't know, if there's another option there and you know what it is, let me know in the comments please. The other thing that I like on the steering wheel, it has got quite a few buttons on there, but most of them I don't use. And they're, and they're not in the way when you're holding onto the wheel and you're using the paddles and stuff, which are perfectly positioned by the way. But these buttons at the bottom are little TV screens. How cool is that? So when you turn them, they do actually tell you what they're doing which is kind of cool and you've also got the other way and you go into individual or slippery ice or whatever so race mode standard also these buttons here the screen bit is a button the same as the center console bit so if you press the screen bit it changes what the button does does that make sense so as i flip through the modes if i leave it on that then when i press the button it goes noisy or quiet so you can actually like change around stuff on your buttons, these are both configurable to whatever you want. And then that's your axle lift, noisy mode. Like, how cool is that? Manual drive. I really like that, that's really smart. The smell of leather in here is absolutely fantastic. It's not as much as the Morgan that uh, Pete from Petra Tours had the other year, other year, but this is all like Alcantara and leather. It's all really nice, soft touch, and really nice, soft touch. Um, like slightly spongy Alcantara headlining, which is really nice. Ah, oh, I've just found, <laughs> I've been looking for that for about six days. The, no way, well there it is. I've been looking for that for ages, don't ask me why. Flat bottom steering wheel's always really nice when you're getting in and out, kind of, especially if you've got like rugby player size thighs like I've got and trying to get out of a bucket seat. So it's nice to have a flat bottom steering wheel, it means you haven't got to like slide the seat back or lift the steering wheel up out of the way when you get out, so that's really handy. Gotta say, the colour of this car is absolutely mega. Absolutely love it. Also, look at the size of these stoppers. I think these brakes are the same size as the wheels on my Civic. Massive anchors, cup twos as well. When these tires are up to temperature, they feel like slicks, they're so good. I'd like to tell you what the stereo sounds like, but I'll be honest, I've been driving around it for about five or six days, and I haven't turned it on once. <laughs> friends of mine is Joe Achilles and Petroped. They interviewed uh, Shmi at his Sh museum and they asked him if you had to get rid of everything here and keep one car, what would it be? And he said his GT Black Series, which is basically this, but the, the newer version of it. So I think it's got slightly more power and a bit more aero. And I can see why. He's even had it wrapped in this colour because you couldn't get this colour in the Black Series and he's had it wrapped this colour because it's a mega colour. down to about 20 miles an hour they will do it with zero brake fade a hundred percent pedal feel and I've never experienced brakes like it my days you do really have to watch yourself in the wet in this it's got cup twos on it I don't think they make a 4 or 4s for it so it's on the cup twos and I drove it in the rain yesterday and every time you touch the throttle and you've got any amount of steering knock on the back tries to light up it is hilarious slash scary <laughs> coming out of a junction or something like that but you're going sideways before the traction controls even know what's going on and at like quarter throttle Well, the most 
almost perfect balance of steering feel. I've got a feeling this is the last car that AMG put a hydraulic steering rack in and it's just the perfect amount of steering feel and kind of not twitchiness but it's really poised and ready for action but not too twitchy that it's really like tram liney and just really kind of like the moment you half breathe on the steering wheel you're already going around the corner you've got a job to keep it in a straight line it's just it's just perfectly balanced Absolutely love driving it around. Big thanks to my buddy Dom as well. He's got all the cutaways and the drive-by shots for me. Um, as always, he's super handy to have near me. As always, guys, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I'll see you on the next one. I've put my thumb up on a lot, but that's because I've really enjoyed it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll be honest, it doesn't really get into its stride till you're doing about 50, 60, then it does lots of pops and cracks. Go up, back down again. Uh, I'll, put, I'll give it a bit of beans coming out of here. I'll give it. Sorry, I had to pull over and listen to it. Not a problem. I'll pull out of here and give it some beans for you. Thank you, you enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, he's just coming past me, so if you hold fire just a sec. Okay, and go, 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 go. Massive carbon ceramics on it, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 